Hello, good day. Welcome to Wildy's World. Ready to get unboxed? It's December unboxed. Uh, I'm working our way through the outline of events, exercises, and projects. Thank you for joining me this month. Every month there is a completely new program, theme, um, media, technique, always trying to introduce new things, have fun, and um, learn, learn a little something new and practice um, new techniques and get your mind engaged and, and spirit and soul engaged in some art making, which I find extremely healing. Um, I wore my full spectrum sweater today in in honor of in honor of uh, light color and celebration but also ugly sweater uh, day U ugly sweater times this is this was gifted to me now it is not ugly by chance but I was about to put on the ugly sweater when I found this Okay, today we are getting into the Snowflake Mandala game. Um, it's a brain challenge. It's a, it's a creative thinking challenge and also a game that you can play with someone else or with yourself. Okay, it goes with the Snowflake um uh, creation, the low relief sculpture that we made because snowflakes are radial symmetry and they repeat their pattern around the circle. Radius, one radius is from the epicenter to the outside edge of the circle. Well, let me just draw, let me draw one for you. When you're drawing circles, you can use a circular object, which is definitely the best way to go, I feel, for a perfect circle. Because we're not, you know, drawing a perfect circle is tough, but don't let it move and just keep your tool going. I'm working with a black marker so you can see what I'm doing, okay? Um, here's a different way to do it, using your hand as, um, as an axis. So let me find... We need two tools for this, okay. And our hand is basically going to be like the compass. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put this one in my, this is my drawing tool, and then this is gonna be the center or the axis. So I'm gonna hold these just like this. And I'm gonna find a spot where I can hold them strongly. So especially the center point. That one's strong and the other one, I'm gonna do it with my marker, but that's not really wise. And then make sure you can turn your paper all the way around. Okay, so here we go. And I'm rotating the paper around the central axis. Okay, so that's a fun way to make circles too. Or if you want to practice and get better, you're going to use your whole arm and just let it flow. Okay, I almost had it. Just let it flow, but it takes a lot of practice. So what you can do if you want to practice your perfect circle making, ah, we're not perfect, but... We're getting closer if we use the traced circle and then start to get the muscle memory in your brain okay I finally felt it there so you want to get the muscle memory in your hand to brain going you can go both ways and find which way is going to be best for you Okay, so the epicenter, and then we have uh, the radius, and well, let me just let me just go ahead and draw. 
this radius down. And so on the perfect circle, all the radii, plural, are the same. If you were going to split this up into sectors, which we are for this game. And then what else? Oh, here, if we take that one and we go all the way from around, from edge to edge through the central point, that's our, that's our diameter. And this is our circumference. So in order to play the game, you need circles. Ah, okay, we got circles. However you want to make them and with, with whatever tools. I suggest um, drawing a vertical line through the center. We're going to divide this into six parts because snowflakes are hexagonal prisms. They're actually crystals. Snow crystals are hexagonal prisms. They're three-dimensional. Um, prism is when a shape is moving through space. So it actually has a hexagon on one side and a hexagon on the other side. And the whole pattern, the structure, is going through the entire low-relief sculpture. It's a very, very thin sculpture. Okay, so after we have one vertical... Okay, go ahead and draw one vertical. I'm using a ruler not to measure, but to draw straight lines. And then I'm going to divide each half into three sectors or pizza slices. So I can eyeball it and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to divide this half in thirds. So I just made a few marks because the way it's going to look is after you intersect... Um, through the center with an X. I'm trying to make this X. So I have my vertical and then my X. And I want all of these slices of pie to look the same. Oh, that's funny. That ruler has an imaginary edge. I drew a line there, but <laughs> it has a edge on it. Okay. So here's what you need. I suggest doing it with a pencil. I'm doing it with a dark marker so you can see. So you need six equal slices. Here's my vertical and then my X. And I find that's just an easier way to do it. It does not have to be perfect. If you want it perfect, use your compass. No, use your protractor and measure the angles. Okay. Right now, if we split it in half, so math and art and geometry are, have so much in common. They're closely entwined uh, because geometry is a way that we draw. <laughs> um, so here's the way I think about it. This diameter, this divides it into two sections. So this one creates an angle right here that is... This angle is 180 degrees. It's wide open. This is 360 degrees in the circle. 180, divide that in half. Here's a 90 degree angle. If I had a line right here, a radius here, if I was doing eight parts, um, that one would be our 90. But now I'm doing 33 and a third. I'm dividing this 180 into, oh, it's not 33 and a third. That's out of 100. Hmm. Boy, whoever wants to figure out the math on that, what angle do you get when you divide 180 by 3? That's what you need to do to figure out how to measure the edge of, or the angles that you're going to create to have six equal sectors or pizza pie slices. Okay, six equal slices in your pie. I didn't do any measuring. I'm eyeballing it and I like it that way. <laughs> but everyone's different. Okay, so with this game, radial symmetry is a pattern that snowflakes grow in this pattern that repeat, repeat, repeats around the circle. And so let's see, you can start with any line or shape as long as you repeat it. So I'm going to start here with a point going out. Here's my first move. Now, 
if I'm playing with someone else, I'm going to complete that move six times. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So let me turn. And we're trying to get it the same every time. If it's not, you're normal. You're a human and you're not perfect. And that's totally great because there are ways to get they're using tools and machines, and we don't have to worry about that, okay? So my first move created this series of shapes right in the center. Now I'm going to radiate my pattern out. At this point, I would pass it to my neighbor, sister, brother, mother, father, cousin, whoever's quarantining with you right now, and I would say, it's your turn, or you guys could swap. That's if you want to collaborate and work together and build one together. So if not, I'm working with myself. It's time for my next move. Uh, I like triangles. So I'm coming in with another one. I'm making a big move now. Okay, now I went from point to point on the circumference to this part of my last move. Let me repeat repeat. Turning your paper just helps you create a stronger symmetry. Oh, I already like the way this one's looking. This is geometric. It's geometry we're using to create this art. And the science behind snowflakes and the science and geometry, that one's looking cool, um, was explored thoroughly by Snowflake Bentley. Um, what was his first name? Wilson Bentley was a photographer and a scientist, and he was fascinated with snowflakes. Maybe you've heard of him before. I adore his work, his photographs, and I will send you links to a short film about him, eight minutes. Um, and the best site is snowflakebentley.com and um, mind blowing okay mind blowing because you're able he photographs snowflakes right you're able to see that they are nearly perfect mathematically but they're not because they're nature just like us so the symmetry is only something we're going for we don't have to achieve it perfectly because we're not machines. I said that, but I'm just stressing that again. Now, what kind of move do I want to make next? How do I want my snowflake to look? Well, I've got all this negative space right now. This is the negative in between. What should I do with it? How do I want to interact with it? You can go with curves. You can go with anything. I'm having fun with these shapes right now. Right now I'm going to do an arrow. Um, what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to do an arrow going out. Okay, there's my next move. Arrow out. And I'm trying to get it to hit the center and do the same, 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 repeat, repeat the pattern. Again, if you want to use a ruler, for straight lines, great. Take your time. It helps to think about what you're doing. Critical thinking, creative thinking. Okay, here's what my beautiful snowflake mandala has turned into just with simple lines repeating in a pattern. Okay, one more and then it's your turn. Um, I'm going to do this one based on letters of the alphabet and you can use shapes, lines, whatever. Let me show you again real quick one more time how to turn this one into the six sections. I'm going to find the center. Basically, I'm estimating the center and I have my vertical and then my X. And that's how I, oh, I'm going to find thirds out here just with my eye. Okay. So if I connect that dot I drew through the center, 
that'll give me my X and the thirds so that I have six approximate equal parts. Okay, this time I'm going to play by doing the letters of my name, okay, or alphabet letters. You can use shapes, um, lines, but this is kind of fun. So I'm going to do a W, and then I'm going to repeat, repeat, repeat. It gets a little, it's a little more advanced. Slow down. Oop, I already am going too fast. You've really got to think about this. Okay, so here's my, these are my W's spiraling out. Now I need an I. 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 Repeat, repeat, going for symmetry. Those should connect about the same one more six times. Okay, there's my W, I, L, and it's turning into a design, right? My L, what kind of L do I want to do? I'll do it a little different. So I made my L, you choose, you're making all these choices. I made my L big and wide and open just for fun. Whoop. When do you start? When do you stop? Think about it. Okay, so far, here's what I've got. That's looking cool. My DY. I need my D. How do I want to create my D? And how do I want to fit my Y? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do a D. This is going to be my D representation as a triangle. I know it's backwards. Here. There's my D. That's the way I'm going to do a D on this one. Why? Because I'm the artist. You're the artist. You do it the way you like. It doesn't have to look like a D. It's just a shape. And I didn't want to, I did not choose to introduce the curve of the D into this design. Okay, I have one more. My Y. Oh, and then we'll talk about what happens out here. Wow, do we have to stay in the circle? No, this is unboxed. We don't stay in the circle unless we want to. Okay, there's my Y. Whoa, how'd I do that? Okay, think about it. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yes, okay. <laughs> that was a little tricky. Sometimes, you know, it's a puzzle, so it's a puzzle for your brain. Okay, now, because it's all contained within the circle, it's time to bust out, time to bust a move and branch out. So please explore beyond the circle with similar moves. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna come out, start to break out with these points. The circle that we started with just gives it a structure. Oh, now I'm doing it 12 times, okay. When I'm talking, I'm not thinking about my artistic choices and then I tend to digress. Okay, so it turned into a sun flake now. Sun crystal. Hey, it's been fun doing this with you guys. I have have a blast with it. This game you can do anywhere. Oh, you could draw it on painting paper, on watercolor paper, and then use your watercolors with it. I do suggest getting some if you're into painting, a watercolor kit, this one is gouache, but a little kit that you can use to paint uh, with water on a heavier paper is always fun. 
So that will break down my thin drawing paper, but if I have a thicker paper, yeah, I would like to see what water plus color does with these. Radial symmetry, uh, snowflakes, and play that game, get that brain engaged. Thank you guys, take care. I'll see you next time. December Unboxed. Oh, you might wanna sign up for January too. It's a subscription, so there's three months um, sections, a package of three months where you can also have a private online session with me so we can go through and work with whatever you want. I can give you pointers or answer questions or guide you through something, okay? So that's with the three month package. And if you, if you, if you have, if you got a note from me or you have a three month package, just contact me about a date, okay? And we'll set up a time. Take care. Enjoy.